everybody. This is Gregory with 5-Minute Catholic Apologetics, where 5 minutes of your time may get you to the divine. Today we're going to do a personal episode. I'm going to talk about my three favorite decades and mysteries of the rosary and ask you which are your three favorite as well. Now before I begin, let's start with a prayer. Nomina Patris et Filii et Spiritui Sancti. Amen. Gloria Patri et Filii et Spiritui Sancto. Sucuturam Principio et Nuc et Semper. Et de Seculi Seculorum. Amen. I'll put in banners for some of my other personal videos. I have one on why uh, I, I'm attracted to doing my prayers in Latin. I have another one on my favorite prayers in general, like it's the Academy Award of Prayers. But I want to do an episode on the Rosary because I, I do do it daily and it's, you know, it's an important part of my life. And there's certain decades that I like more than others. And I think in general, the Joyful Mysteries I think it just as a man, it's hard for me to relate to the Joyful Mysteries. So my three favorite, none of them are going to come from the Joyful Mysteries. No offense to the Joyful Mysteries, and like everybody is different, and we meditate on the life of Christ uh, equally, and, but there's just some that appeal to me more than others. And so in this competition for my top three out of the, the 20 Mysteries, uh, we're just going to exclude... The Nativity and Easter, simply just because those are just such large, important events in the life of Christ and the church. And as such, it's one of those things where we just have to take those out. If not, everybody's real answer should be the birth of Christ and, of course, uh, his resurrection. So we're going to take those out. So let's start with number three, the Ascension. I love the Ascension. Why do I love the Ascension? Well, it's just the idea that, of course, Christ is resurrected. He spends 40 days. We know it's 40 days because it's mentioned in Scripture. He's spending 40 days. He's evangelizing. He's talking to people. And then, as we see in the beginning of Acts, he's just like, okay, see you later. And then he gives his little goodbye, tells us to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and evangelize and teach to all people. He doesn't say, I'm going to pass out the Bible teach to all people, and then he leaves. The, the, other, the other thing I like about it is that that's the moment in which the righteous souls from the Old Testament were allowed access into heaven. And this is from sacred oral tradition. So we know that Christ spent three days in the, the abode of the righteous or in the bosom of Abraham, as it's mentioned in the parable with Lazarus and, and the, uh, the rich man. And so that was a place essentially like a waiting place for people like Moses and Adam and Isaiah, Ezekiel, all these righteous people from the Old Testament, John the Baptist. They were just kind of waiting. So when Christ died, he went down there for three days. That's why we notice in the Apostles' Creed, Nicene Creed, we talk about how he went uh, to hell. Hell is loosely translated as, as, as we think of like the, the, the place of the damned. It's not the place of the damned. He went to talk to and evangelize and talk to the Old Testament prophets. And then on ascension is when they actually came up and got to go to heaven. So I just love that story of that. Number two is going to be Agony of the Garden. I did a live stream with Amber Rose, a religious hippie, and I like to always ask people what's their favorite decade or mystery, and she mentioned Agony of the Garden, and her answer was similar to mine. I just love the humanity that Christ shows in the agony, uh, just the fact that, you know, he's crying, there's the, 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 the tears of blood, he's being suckered by angels, and he says, you know, I don't want this but thy will be done, I will do a past this cup of suffering. And I just always love it when he shows humanity. Because we can relate to that, right? We can relate to that. And also that whole Garden of Gethsemane has my favorite line, you know, the spirit's willing, but the flesh is weak, as he tells the apostles who've fallen asleep. But I love the agony in the garden. It's just, it's great. And I would say, as a whole, as a composite, my favorite set of mysteries is the sorrowful mysteries. I find them to be easy to relate to and I can just imagine either me witnessing it like the carrying of the cross or the scourging or I'm actually trying to feel like what it'd be like to be scourged and whipped and all these things. So I, I, as a whole I love the sorrowful but my number one though is not in the sorrowful it's back in the glorious and it's the descent of the Holy Spirit. Why? I've talked about this, I think, in a previous episode. I like the idea of the apostles are scared, the disciples are scared, they, that Jesus just died, they haven't received the Holy Spirit, they don't know what they're going to do, they're potentially going to be rounded up and persecuted, and then 
from there the Holy Spirit comes as, as Christ predicted, as Christ told them that was going to come. And then they receive courage. Right? So after the tongues of fire come and they're given the ability to speak in tongues and so forth, then they open the doors and they just start talking to everybody. And Peter, of course, gives this famous speech at the beginning of Acts. And then it's just the rest is history. And now we have the church, 1.2 billion people, and it's just all over this great earth and all the fruits that the church has brought. So as somebody who loves evangelism and catechesis and, of course, apologetics, that's the whole raison d'etre of this, of this channel, of course I'm going to love the descent of the Holy Spirit because it's people who are scared and we're all scared. I have an episode, you know, don't be afraid. To, to, to show your faith. And we're all scared at different times in our life, but the Holy Spirit comes and then you see, and this is the beauty of the saints, right? They're, they're role models for us. You see these saints who, these apostles who, you know, didn't always put their best foot forward, but then Holy Spirit comes and at that point, they're just kicking butt. They're just kicking butt. And from that small group, like the mustard seed, Christianity spreads throughout the whole world and they have courage. They don't fear to the point of martyrdom. We have that episode on how each of the apostles died. And that's why I love the descent of the Holy Spirit. That's number one. Guys, post in the comments. I want to know your top three. I'd love to hear from you. Hit the notification button. Share with others. Until next time, take care. God bless and pray.